F.W. Fitch Company, makers of those fine Fitch products, presents Dick Powell as private investigator Richard Rogue. In Rogue's Gallery. Hello, Richard Rogue speaking. Hello, Mr. Rogue. This is Stark McVeigh in Minden, California. Yeah? I want to talk to you, Rogue. Well, you're talking. I want you to come up here to Minden and do a little job for me. I don't want you to let anybody in this town know who you are. Uh, you can register at the hotel as a traveling man, a salesman or something, and I... Uh, I... Hold it, hold it, McVeigh. I can't get away right now. I, I wired you $500 expense money. It should be at your office now. Mm-hmm. We'll talk over the rest of the deal when you get here. Oh, five bills, huh? Well, what kind of a case is it? A case that pays money. You can get out of there at 7 o'clock, and if you want to take a train, I'll I will drive. That... I'll leave as soon as the 500 arrives. Take me about two hours to get there, won't it? That's right. I'll contact you at the hotel tonight about nine. Okay, see you then. Hey, boy, get me a paper, please. Are you back, sir? Oh, yeah, yeah, I want to check in. Here. Thanks. Hey, clerk. Yes? You got a room? Well, I don't no, know. I didn't ask the price, did I? I'll take anything from a broom closet to the bridal suite. Now here, buy yourself a box of cigars to smoke while you're thinking it over. Oh, thank you, sir. If you'll just register, I think we can take care of you. Hmm, thanks. Have my bag sent up, will you? I'll pick up my key in a minute. Hey, Sonny, got an evening paper? Yes, sir, but all the news isn't in that paper, mister, believe me. What do you mean? There was a murder in town tonight. Just a little while ago, as a matter of fact, a man was shot, killed, dead. Hmm, all that? Well, Menden is an enterprising community. Who got the business? A fellow by the name of Stark McVeigh. We'll return to our story in just a moment, but first here's Jim Doyle to give you some smooth talk on a smooth subject. Yes, smooth is the word for it, Dick. That describes Fitch's No Brush Shaving Cream to a T. For it has a rich, creamy consistency that spreads over your face like a cool April breeze. There's nothing heavy or greasy about Fitch's No Brush, yet it does a man-sized job when it comes to wilting a tough beard. You see, Fitch's No Brush is a blend of three important shaving ingredients. These are balanced in such a way that you get efficiency in softening whiskers, plus a skin conditioning action that protects your skin from irritation. Yes, they all add up to a shave that's really solid comfort. You men who say there's nothing like lather for a swell, smooth shave will like Fitch's Brush Cream. It gives lots of dense lather that stays moist all during the shave and rinses off easily. It, too, contains the special skin conditioner for sensitive skins. Both Fitch's Brush and Fitch's No Brush Shaving Cream come in handy jars, big 25 and 50 cent sizes. For smoother, happier shaves, switch to Fitch. And now we return you to Dick Powell as private investigator Richard Rogue in Rogue's Gallery. Well, this case looked like it was officially over before it started. The man I was working for had just been killed. I found that out while I was registering in Menden's Menden's only hotel with running water. A bellboy gave me the news. And while I was just standing there with my mouth hanging open, a big, beefy guy eased up to me and said, You're Richard Rogue, aren't you? Oh, my name's Richard. Yeah, I know you're Rogue. I've seen your picture in the paper too often to be mistaken. I want to talk to you. Why? Because I'm chief of police in this town. Oh, oh, well, you just want to have a social talk, huh? Yeah, about a murder. Come on, Rogue, let's retire to the bar and play questions and answers. What about? About what you're doing in town, among other things. Come on, get moving, big shot. All right now, Rogue, suppose you start talking. What are you doing in Minden under the name of Richard? Hey, bartender, you put too much sugar in this old-fashioned. Oh, so you think I like to hear myself talk? 
I said, what are you doing here? I'm on a vacation. Does a man named Stark McVeigh always finance your vacations? Hmm, McVeigh. Hmm, yes. Well, the name sounds familiar. I'll bet it does. He had a call in for you all day down at the city. He reached you at the Hunt Bar Room a little before 5 o'clock, and he wired you $500 to your office this afternoon. Huh. <laughs> Maybe that's why his name sounds familiar. Well, could be that. Well, what was it that made McVeigh think he'd need you $500 worth of rogue? He didn't say. Uh, who was McVeigh, anyway? I never met the guy. Never heard of him till he called me. You think I'll believe that? How do I know what you believe? I'm telling you the truth. That's all I can be sure of. And what's the idea of the pressure? You got ambitions to hang McVeigh's murder on me? Uh-huh. You know he's been murdered. How did you know that? Well, the bellboy told me. Who did it, Rogue? Who was McVeigh afraid of? I don't know anything about the guy. I didn't murder him. I hardly ever murder strangers. And now, uh, thanks for the drink and so long. Wait a minute. You leaving town, Rogue? I don't think so, no. I like the climate here. It's, uh, it's so peaceful. Well, don't you leave without seeing me. Or you'll come back with your hands cuffed behind you, lying down. <laughs> oh, well, if there's anything I love, it's a clever conversationalist. Huh? Huh? Now, I'll make a rule, egghead. Don't put any of your rural gumshoes on my tail if you like them personally. I don't like to be shattered. <laughs> Come in. Here's your ice water, Mr. Rogue. The name is Richard. Skip it, skip it. I heard you talking to Chief Reese. I know who you were anyway. Oh, well, you're a smart lad, huh? <laughs> Did you know Stark McVeigh? Sure. He used to be around here quite a bit. In the bar. What was his racket? What did he do for a living? Uh, how long had he been living here in Menden? Nobody knows where he made his money. He didn't work since he moved here about two years ago. Retired, I guess. That's what everybody thought. Always seemed to have plenty of money. Oh, he did, huh? Well, who were his friends? Was he married? Look, if I'm going to answer all of those questions, I want to work on the case with you. You need somebody who knows the town. Now, I'm an ex-GI. I work with intelligence. I can be a big help to you. Okay. <laughs> okay, you're working. Now, was McVeigh married? No. Didn't run around with women much either. I mean, here. Some blonde came down to see him once in a while. Drove a Cadillac convertible. Looked like a movie star. Mm. Did McVeigh make many trips? Was he, uh... Out of town much? Well, he traveled quite a bit. Hmm? Did he have any enemies in town? Nobody knew him well enough to hate him. He was a kind of a stranger, Mr. Rogue. Nobody got to know him very well. He live alone? Yeah. He had a woman come in a couple of times a week to clean up. That's all. Good. Well, who do you think killed him? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Any suspicious-looking characters been seen around town lately? Not that I know of. But they could have been here without me knowing it. Okay. Hey, uh, what's your name? Buzz Walters. What time are you off duty? About an hour, nine o'clock. Good, I'll see you then. In the lobby, right? Yeah. Uh, what are you going to do now? Oh, I'm going out to the house, McVeigh's house, and take a look around. You know where it is? I'll find it. See you at nine. Who is it? Turn on the lights. Who is it? Is, is that you, Hank? Yeah. Turn on the lights. Hey, hey, you're not Hank. Who are you? What are you doing here? Will you turn on the lights so we can talk this thing over, Junior? <laughs> oh. Oh, you're the guy who, who bumped McVeigh, huh? Okay, Junior. Stand right where you are. And let you shoot at me? That doesn't sound practical. I've got my gun out now. How about taking another shot so I can spot you? Who are you? The law? <laughs> oh, it... Okay, Junior, throw that gun away. Oh, don't, don't shoot anymore. You, you hit me. Let me hear that gun hit the wall. Throw it. <laughs> okay. Now, maybe we can talk. Keep your hands down to your sides. Look, I'm shot. I'm bleeding. You gotta do something for me. Later, later. First, Junior, you're going to answer some questions. I, hey. Did hey. I startle you? Huh? Just hold that pause. Who is this guy, Shorty? I don't know. He, he came in here and I I thought it was you. I, I took a shot at him and... But he but he got me. Yeah, uh, I see. Uh, well? You better get somebody to take care of your friend here. He's got a bad chest. Don't wound. let that worry you. You're going to have worse before long. And we'll start you out 
like this. <laughs> oh. everything on cloud eight. Oh, it's fine, fine. Say, Rogie, I missed you last week. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I had the flu. Yeah, didn't, uh, didn't Dennis O'Keefe come up to see you? Nah, not that Irishman. He doesn't use his head the way you do, Rogie. <laughs> Say, who did it this time? I don't know, I don't know. But I'm gonna get him. If it's the last thing I do. Oh, you better hurry back downstairs then. You're getting further away every minute. Huh? What do you mean? <laughs> You've got a surprise coming, Rogie. You're a side door tourist right now. Huh? Oh, well, that settles it. I'm going over the side. So long, you gore. So long, Rogie. <laughs> Come on, uh, fella. Come out of it. Huh? Oh. 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 Hey. Hey. Hey, this thing's moving. Sure, friend. It's okay. You're in a freight car. Hmm? A, fr a freight car? Well, how well it seems somebody wrapped you over the skull and threw you in here. Ooh. Who? I don't know. You were here when I got here. Don't worry. You'll be okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for the first aid. I... Where are we? Well, about uh, ten miles out of Minden, this red ball got a hot box and was held up. We're on the big grade going into the mountains. Ah, yeah. oh, thanks. <sighs> hey, what well, do you got around my head? Yeah, you were bleeding. I tore up your shirt and made a bandage of it. Oh, thanks. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump out of this thing. Are you crazy? Yeah, it could be. Uh... Hey, look. Yeah, look, I, I've still got my wallet. You have? How come you didn't lift it? <laughs> I didn't think of it. Oh, you're an honest man. Yeah, here's a 20. Thanks. Okay. Well, here, here goes nothing. So long. Ride? Hey, driver! Driver! Ride! Driver! You going into Minden? Yeah. What happened to you? Well, I was... I was knocked out and robbed and left on the road. I, I, I got to get back to Minden to uh, report it to the cops. Okay, buddy. I wouldn't leave anybody out here. But I got a revolver here and don't try any funny stuff. Uh, what, me? I don't want to try anything. I... I just want to get back to Minden. I'll take you into Minden. Get in. Thanks. You can let me out here. Oh, no. Just stay right where you are. Hmm? Hey, what's the idea? And will you get that heater out of my face? I'll tell you where to get out. Oh? Well, when will that be? When we get to the police station. That's where you're going, mister. So I brought him in here to the police station, Chief. He looks suspicious to me. Yeah, nice work, Mr. Pollard. We'll take care of him, thanks. I hope I did the right thing. Yeah, you sure did. Thanks for the ride, Mr. Pollard. Goodbye. You just go right ahead, Pollard. I'll see you later. Oh, uh, Chief. Huh? There's no reward, is there? Uh, 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 no, no, no. So long. Oh, so long. Well? Well, I see you're back, Rogue. I told you you'd get in trouble nosing around in this town. Now, you gonna talk? Well, I haven't much to say, Reese. I went out to McVeigh's house. The door was open. I walked in. Some guy took a shot at me. 
I shot back. Mm. Got him, and while I was trying to find out what it was all about, another guy sneaked up behind me and bent a rod over my head. I woke up in a freight train ten miles out of town. This, uh, this, uh, Pollard, uh, gave me a ride in. And that's the end of the story. Yeah. Well, how do you figure it? I don't know. But I want to get back out to that house. You coming with me? Well, what do you expect to find out there? We combed the house from one end to the other. Well, there's something going on in your charming little town that needs taken care of, Chief. And how come you don't have men at that house? There was a murder there a few hours ago. Now, don't you tell me my business, Rogue. Oh, I... something smells. Come on. Let's get out to McVeigh's house. I want to do a little combing myself. Now, you'd better stay in line, Rogue. After all, I'm the chief here, and yeah, I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've read your star. Do. I don't know whether you're a dumb chief or a smart operator. But we're going to McVeigh's house, and we're going to tear it to pieces until I get a lead. Now, come on. I'll try the door. Don't knock, it may be open. Okay. Hmm. Well, close the door. All right, all right. Hmm. Now, the lights don't work. The main switch must be pulled. We'll get by with this flashlight. Come on, let's take a look around. Hmm. Hey. Hmm? You see where that lamp is on the floor over there? Uh, yeah. Well, the guy who was shooting at me was lying right by the side of it after I got him. Oh. Look, there's blood on the floor. You see it? Uh, uh, hmm? What was that? Ah, seemed to come from that closet. Somebody's in there. Well, come on out. Come on out or I'll shoot that door so full of holes we can pull you out through them. Okay. I'll come out. Well, hello, Buzz. Welcome to the party. What are you doing here? Well, Mr. Rogue told me he was coming out here, and he was supposed to be back to meet me in the lobby at 9 o'clock. He didn't come back, so I decided I'd run out here and look for him. You got here a little late, Buzz. Oh, no, I didn't. Well, it was a little late to do you any good, but I saw plenty. I saw them walking around here. Wait a minute. What do you mean, them? Two men and a girl. The blonde girl that used to come here to see Mr. McVeigh. Oh, oh, you mean she was here? Yep. I hid outside of the window and watched them. They were carrying stuff up from the basement. That is, the girl and this man were, and putting it in the car. Uh, Buzz, did you hear them talk? Did the girl mention his name? No, no, she just called him Sweetheart or Honey or something like that. There was something funny about the other guy. What? He never did come out. The other two came out, got into that Cadillac convertible, and drove away about ten minutes ago. Well, then there must still be a man in the house. Yep, he'd been shot. He had trouble getting around. Oh, it must have been the guy I shot. I've been looking for him. Well, why didn't you call me? I was working for Mr. Rogue. Uh, I know he'd be here. Oh, Good boy, Buzz. Now, come on, let's shake this house down. If that thug is in here, we better find him before he finds us. Well, this is the best kept basement I ever saw in a bachelor's house, Buzz. How about it? It's sure clean. Hmm. Hey, look. There are a few muddy footsteps going this way. The they're going both ways, Mr. Rogue. Ah, yeah, right over here and then back out. Hmm, that's funny. Hmm. They walk right up to this blank wall and then back again. Maybe the stuff they were carrying out of the basement was stacked up against the wall. I doubt it. Hey, there's nobody up here. Shook down every room, every closet up here. There's nobody. Well, we're even. There's nobody down here either. I tell you, that guy they called Shorty never came out of the house. I was watching and I know he didn't. Hey, you're imagining things, kid. People don't just disappear. If he was here, we could see him now, couldn't we? If we could find him. Hmm. I've got an idea. Yeah? Oh, there must be a hidden door of something in this wall here someplace. Oh, now, wait a minute, Rogie. Okay, okay. So I've been reading too many comic books, but I'm making my guess, and I'm going to see if I'm right. You see these footprints coming over here and going back again? Oh, uh, yeah. That, hmm. That's what it is. Maybe there's a loose tile in the wall or something. Yeah. Listen now. <laughs> There it is, Reese, you die hard. You hear that? It's hollow in there. Now, come on, let's figure this thing out. Hey, here is a loose tile, right here. Huh? Huh? Let me see. Yeah. Well, I'll Are be... Are you a... sure you're surprised, Sheriff? Why, I... There's a regular doorknob in there. Yeah. Yeah, there is. Hmm. Well, it's locked, but I think I can take care of that. Look out. Now, well, that ought to do it. Flash your light in there, Reese. Okay. Hmm? 
Oh, brother, look at that. Huh? Hey, he's dead. <laughs> We'll return to our story in just a moment. But now, I'd like to ask the ladies a question. Have you ever had the shampoo blues? The shampoo blues, of course, is that dejected feeling you get when your hair becomes dry and unmanageable after a shampoo. If that's been your experience, then here's a way to beat those blues. Try Fitch's Saponified Coconut Oil Shampoo. Use this clear, golden, liquid shampoo as often as you like. It will never leave your hair dry or difficult to manage. That's because Fitch's saponified shampoo is made from pure, natural oils. Just a little makes oceans of cleansing lather. Rinses out easily, too, for Fitch's saponified shampoo contains its own patented rinsing agent. It leaves your hair soft, lustrous, and easy to manage even right after you shampoo it. Yes, you can always use Fitch's saponified shampoo with complete confidence and freedom from the shampoo blues. So use it regularly. Buy an economical bottle at your drug or toilet goods counter, or ask for a professional application at your beauty shop. And now we return to Dick Powell as private investigator Richard Rogue in Rogue's Gallery. Well, you could have knocked me down with an atom bomb when we opened that secret door in the basement of McVeigh's house and saw what was inside. It was an air-conditioned room with fluorescent lighting and strictly occupational furniture. And sitting at the table in a swivel chair was the body of the man named Shorty. Buzz, the bellboy, said, Hey, he's dead! Yeah, yeah, they let him have one right through the temple. Good Lord. Two murders in one day. In Minden. That'll put the place on the map, won't it? I wonder why they killed him. Well, it looks pretty simple to me. I got him through the chest when he shot at me, and a wounded man is kind of a handicap to a mob that's trying to make a getaway with a set of counterfeit plates. Counterfeit? Is that what they were doing? Yeah. This place is one of the best equipped engraving shops I've ever been in. <laughs> you knew that right away, didn't you, Reese? Mm. Oh, 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 sure. Right there. That's what McVeigh's racket was, huh? Yeah. Come on, let's take a look around. Here. Look here. Hmm? What did you find? Exhibit A. A whole stack of $10 bills. Let me see. Yeah. <laughs> All with the same serial numbers. Oh, there's phony as a coarse girl's accent. Hmm. Well, Reese, let's get back to town and get some post-mortem fingerprints off your late pal McVeigh. And some information on the license number Buzz got off that Cadillac. Do you think we'll get him, Mr. Rogue? Oh, we're a lead pipe cinch, Buzz. You know, if you hadn't been sharp enough to jot down that license number, <laughs> we'd have been out of luck. Even Reese can trace that. Yeah, I think you could use a guy like me. Regular, Mr. Rogue? Oh, well, I'm sorry, kid. I, I'm a, well, I'm a lone wolf. But you'll make some dough out of this case. You can bet your shirt there's a reward out for this mob, and we'll split it. Oh. You know, Junior, if you hadn't been around that house and seen those two drive away without Shorty... This crime may have never been solved. That's right, I guess. Nobody would ever have looked for the secret room. You know, I've always wanted to be a detective. Well, Rogie, the Department of Motor Vehicles says this is the address that car is registered to. Miss uh, Sylvia Adams, 1924 Euclid Avenue in Los Angeles. Well, that makes it my meat, Reese. Oh, oh, yeah. Come on, Buzz, you want to drive to L.A. with me? Sure, Mr. Rogue. I want to be in at the kill on this case. <laughs> Well, this is the house, huh? Miss Sylvia Adams, 1924 Euclid Avenue. What are we going to do? Well, first you go see if the car's in the garage while I take a look around. Okay. Hey, Buzz, Buzz. Shh. Come here, wait a minute. Yeah? Hey, look in that window out there. Mm -hmm. That man. He's the one who knocked me out. Hmm. Oh, is that the man and the blonde woman you saw leaving McVeigh's house? Yep, that's them. Mm, looks like they're having a beef. Ah, that's good. Buzz, we're going to do a little listening. Oh, how are you going to get in? Back door, come on. But it's probably locked. Yeah, could be. 
But if I haven't a skeleton key on my chain that'll open that door, I'm going to get a new locksmith. Now, quiet. Come on. You didn't have to kill them both, Hank. You're a trigger-happy fool. Will you stop harping on that? They're dead. That's all there is to it. We're rid of them, and we got the counterfeit plates. We got no more troubles, baby. From now on, it's you and me. It is? What do you mean? Just that I don't have to put up with you anymore, either. One word out of me, and the cops will put you under the jail, Hank. That's what they do with killers, you know? I don't like you. I never did like you. But you're going to keep me in money and minks and everything I want as long as I live. Killer. That may not be long, you little double-crossing. Hank, put that gun away. Hank. Hank, no. So you were going to double-cross no. me. Hank, no, no. So all that sweet talk no. was just an act. No. Right? Well, here's no. my act. Baby. No, no, no. Six and touch your eye, Hank. Drop the gun. Pick it up, Buzz. Yeah. Who are you? Well, now, that's not very flattering. I'm Richard Rogue. But we'll talk about that later, lovely. Right now, get up against that wall, both of you. Start singing and make the lyrics cover a couple of murders. Come on, sing! Well, that was the end of that story. It all happened over a woman, almost everything does. When I got through chatting with Sylvia, I, I had the whole story. McVeigh and Hank had a sweet little counterfeiting deal all set up and running smoothly. McVeigh, a master engraver, made the plates and hand-printed them in his shop in Minden. Hank wholesaled the stuff. Everything was just too, too divine. Until Hank moved in on McVeigh's girl, Sylvia, and got caught at it. McVeigh wanted to hire me to front for him in exposing Hank as a counterfeiter, and that's what started all of the excitement and the murders. We found the counterfeiting plate in Sylvia's Cadillac. And I collected five grand reward for cracking the case. <laughs> I split it with Buzz. He was a happy kid. Yes, well, as I've always said, sure she left him, to coin a phrase. <laughs> it means find the woman. And by the way, if you have any luck, sure she won for me too, will you? I'm feeling much better and not doing a thing tonight. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is Dick Powell again, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed our story tonight. Ray Buffum wrote it. Leith Stevens composed and conducted the music, and D. Engelbach produced and directed. But don't forget now, you've all got a date with us next Thursday night. We have a story for you about a man with a million dollars, a beautiful wife, and an overpowering jealousy. We call it Best Laid Plans. So make a date with us, will you? Thanks for listening, and now here's Jim Doyle. Don't forget to tune in again next Thursday, same time. And be sure to see Dick Powell in his newest RKO picture, Cornered, at your local theater soon. And remember, tune in again next Thursday, same time, same station, when you will again hear Dick Powell as Richard Rogue in Rogue's Gallery. Remember, if dandruff is your problem, ask for Fitch's Dandruff Remover Shampoo. It's the only shampoo made whose guarantee to remove dandruff is backed by one of the world's largest insurance firms. No other shampoo can make this statement. Ask for Fitch's Dandruff Remover Shampoo at your drug or toilet goods counter, barber or beauty shop. Fitch is spelled F-I-T-C-H. Fitch's Dandruff Remover Shampoo.